This is for Jananiyas Prabhu. And when are you going to begin, start initiating? They're writing their own questions. And <laughs> conspiracy marriage. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about it. <coughs> That's it. This and is it, for... Uh, okay. That's it. <laughs> I never thought that. <laughs> this is for His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj. It is said that one should use all his qualities in the service of Krishna. Is it possible for a devotee who is very much politically inclined to use his political abilities in the service of Krishna? That is a political question. <laughs> In Srimad Bhagavatam, many of the greatest devotees were kings who were very much involved in politics. Yudhisthira Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Parikshit Maharaj. So they used their political tendencies in pure devotional service. In fact, Srila Prabhupada, who had some devotees who were lawyers, attorneys, had them start a political party in America to run for president. The name of the political party was In God We Trust. He very much encouraged them to be involved in politics for the purpose of spreading Krishna consciousness. And Srila Prabhupada explains Ramananda Rai was a politician. And in certain circumstances, even Sanatana Goswami, he was a politician. And when he was in prison, he used his political expertise for the service of Krishna. So mundane politics is when our motivation is selfish aggrandizement, selfish acquisition of property, selfish power, that we want for ourselves. When we want to be the controller, then politics is very dangerous and corrupting. But when we use politics in a spirit of the servant of the servant of the servant, with unconditional motivations, then that is transcendental politics. And Often it is a very powerful way of serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the, the real essence is we could use our political tendencies, but they should never be with the motivation of being the enjoyer, the proprietor, or the controller. They should be for serving others and bringing them closer to God. Hare Krishna. This is for His Holiness Chandramoli Swami Maharaj. Please clarify, if Krishna has already planned to have incarnation at the end of Kali Yuga, how can we push back Kali?
how does that connect with the incarnation? What is that? He's asking, how can we push back Kali Yuga? And what does that have to relate to the incarnation at the end of the Yuga? How is that connected? It seems uh, if uh, Kalki avatar is going to appear, mm. when Kali Yuga will be in its most intensity, then how can we push back Kali if it's already planned? Well, it's predicted, Lord Chaitanya predicted, and we also mention quite often how in every town and village, Lord Chaitanya said, the chanting of the holy name will happen all over the world. And it's given in within a certain time period within the Kali Yuga that for 5,000 years up, for the next 5,000 years, it will start to increase more and more this chanting of the holy name and the devotional service to the Lord will increase. But then after 5,000 years, it'll start going down again. And then after a period of 10,000 years, it'll be again, you know, full-fledged Kali. This is the material world. So what is the benefit of Lord Chaitanya's movement if it's only going to be here for 10,000 years? That so many souls within that 10,000 years can take advantage and get out of the material world and go back to Godhead. It'll be the, for the benefit of those who take advantage. But ultimately, you know, Srila Prabhupada has said many times, this is the material world. It'll always be the material world. And the material world means, you know, suffering, illusion, death, defeat. So Lord Chaitanya is giving the opportunity to, for these 10,000 years, to get out. So we should take advantage. And then, after these 10,000 years, we read in the Puranas, some of the more pra uh, less quoted Puranas, the Agni Purana, the Vishya Purana, the Linga Purana, a few others, how, what will happen towards the end of Kali? Or when, what will happen towards the end of Kali Yuga? It's described in the 12th Canto, it's also described in, in these Puranas. And it becomes actually degraded. The whole material world, the mode of goodness becomes completely lost. And the modes of passion and ignorance become so prominent that people will be eating their own children. It's described in these Puranas. Uh, and Prabhupada also has mentioned many times that towards the end of Kali Yuga, people will live to about 20 years. Papa said, if they live 20 years, they'll be a grand old man. <laughs> so we can't imagine such degradation, but we can see right now certain aspects of Kali, how it's starting to manifest in a very degraded way. But Lord Chaitanya's movement is that bright light for the next 10,000 years. So take advantage of that, become fully Krishna conscious, and... Try to save as many souls as possible and bring them back to the spiritual world. And Prabhupada said, it's a grand opportunity to, mm -hmm. to go back to the spiritual world. Lord Chaitanya has made it easy. And he said, don't stick around. <laughs> don't come back life after life because Kali Yuga will be getting worse. <laughs> so get, get out. So the question is, what, we can, what can we do? Chant Hare Krishna and give Krishna consciousness to others. That's what we can do. If you, can, if you help one person out of the material world, your life is not only successful, it's glorious. If you can save one soul. And that's how kind Krishna is. He recognizes someone fully if they help another person become God conscious. That's how magnanimous Lord Chaitanya is. So there's a great opportunity to perfect our life and to, to help as many people as possible. So take advantage of that. Hare Krishna. 
Prabhu, Jarani was for Pangajangi Prabhu. Everyone can answer. Prabhuji, you have mentioned in your classes that uh, uh, that Krishna consciousness is very simple. Just, just serve Krishna and don't worry about mystical potencies or siddhis, even for preaching. So, in the, as a brahmacharis or as any preachers, we also uh, need to have some skills for preaching. Mm. And you also mentioned that there is a scaring thing that if you are attached to skills or extra abilities, then you may have to take many births and you may be born in a Vaishnava family. So, it takes long time, but you can just go back in one lifetime. It seems like if you are just bothered about yourself and you do just little service, you are not pressurized in the ashram that you have to learn shlokas or be, you should play powerful, nice murdang, otherwise you will be thrown out. There's no pressure, but, but at the same time as a preaching that uh, we have to learn some skills and all. And also there is, there is a danger of attachment to those skills, not for preaching but for own reputation. So what is the balance of not getting attached to the Siddhis, at the same time we should preach for, we should have some abilities for preaching sake. Yeah, the, the idea is to emphasize that it is easy to go back to Godhead. First become convinced of that. It is that simple. Then you can do what you like. <coughs> For your, your learning uh, slokas and things like that, you have to do it. Because that's, it's not for yourself, already you've been delivered. You've accepted the process, you've got initiation, the bone of your chanting Hare Krishna, you've been delivered. So it's not so much for yourself, it's for others. So then we live for others, because our problem's been solved. So for, for learning slokas, yes, you have to do it, if you're going to go out and preach. Prabhupada said you should read Shankacharya's <laughs> Vedanta Sutra Bhasha. Although it says it will crack the heart of the devotee, but Prabhupada said if you don't know what's in it, how you can preach? So for advanced devotees who, can, who, are, who are good at studying and things like that, they can even read books like that with the idea of preaching. The idea is not to... It, it's... It, it's, it's not a necessary qualification to have all that knowledge, to have all those symptoms of love of Godhead, to come to the stage of pure numb. Well, that we're aspiring. I think if I think I've got to get these things, it's necessary for my Krishna consciousness. It means you miss the. Then it's there. It's like there was one. Uh, Rathiatra festival, I think it was probably in Montreal. Anyway, Prabhupada gave an address, arrival address. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this festival. Uh, we didn't ask anyone to follow us, and we didn't pay anyone. But naturally, all of these boys and girls, they're following us, and they were chanting Hare Krishna and dancing. So you see, this is a very natural thing. It's coming directly from the soul. And that's all we need to do. You simply chant Hare Krishna and take uh, the prasadam with the devotees. But if you want knowledge, then we have so many books here. We have hundreds of books. So this is the idea. It's a, it's a natural thing. If you just take it, that's sufficient. But if you want more, you, then you're okay. It's there also. So generally, for, it's for our conviction. But what we're trying to say is that understand the essence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, become convinced about that. Then it'll save you a lot of time. Because the knowledge and everything we're getting is, is simply for conviction. Our studying and everything is for our own conviction of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving freely. So that's, I'm, I'm trying to get that idea across, not that you shouldn't study, you shouldn't do anything else. <laughs> uh, but whatever else is, is favorable for your Krishna consciousness and spreading Krishna consciousness, then you, you can do all those things. And. Again, if you want these different cities, if you want Ruchi, you want Ashakti, you want Prem, you want Bhav, you want all these things like that, 
the best and easiest way to get them is simply accepting Lord Chaitanya's mercy and going out and giving to others. That will come more easily than, than, than separately endeavoring to study for them. The, the symptoms. But for preaching, you have to study, of course. It's necessary. Hare Krishna. This is for His guest, Pankajangri Prabhu. Sometimes we are asked to pray for some sick devotees in our chanting. What should we think while we are chanting that round? Because also we are told to hear the holy name and meditate on the meaning of the holy name. If you ask Chandra Moli Swami, he'll give you a different answer. If you ask Satchinandan Swami, he'll also give you a different answer. So, I'm giving you another different answer. <coughs> that, uh, to, make a, to make an offering for somebody who's sick, you can do that. <coughs> you can chant your, some rounds for the and offer the benefit for somebody else. But that actually shouldn't be part of, that's not part of your 16 rounds. 16 rounds is obligation to your spiritual master. But over and above that you can. <clears throat> and as far as uh, meditating on different uh, aspects of spiritual life, i.e. pastimes of Krishna or understanding the meaning of the mantra. I don't have any realization about that. <laughs> so f for my own, uh, my own answer would be just because that's a, this is what I, this is where I'm at. I just try to only hear Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. But of course different acharyas are saying different things and given different shlokas to meditate on while you're chanting. But the one thing that Srila Prabhupada sticks in my mind is, <coughs> he said, chanting is thinking. There's no need of thinking of anything else. <coughs> so, like I say, you can ask others, you'll get different answers. Hare Krishna. <coughs> <coughs> 